in a very short time of arriving here, the sustainability of this particular bottom oval became apparent as a key long-term project. So it was a matter of approaching people within the school community to see if we can find a long-term solution to runoff, erosion and high level use of this area by 510 students five days a week. In 2015 there was a vision document developed. One of the issues was how to manage rainwater, how to keep stormwater within the school and to make best use of it with the idea of the shared vision of not having that stormwater end up in the Cooks River. Council runs water sensitive design workshops by David Knight, so we decided that one of these could be applied to the school, for they can come up with their design and solutions to their problems on site. What I've got prepared today is a, is a presentation that is an ideas workshop and then we run two other workshops. The second one is all about once you've got some inspiration and some ideas how you actually would implement something like that and the third one is a really hands-on practical. This water sensitive idea, most of that's kind of intuitive but the bit that's kind of not so uh, clear is this urban design bit at the end. How does that water sensitive bit relate to urban design? And the idea is when we use water, we should actually express it in the landscape so that it's actually part of our urban design. And the way that we manage water at the moment is to put it all underground into big stormwater pipes. So we don't see it, it's actually not part of the urban design at all, it's actually very engineered. But with water sensitive urban design, we actually celebrate and express water because it's such a beautiful material to work with. Rain gardens actually drain dry after rainfall. And the idea is that that hole in the ground is where we direct the water to and it can actually temporarily pond that water. We put in some soil. That natural soil filter is fantastic at removing sediment, heavy metals, organic pollutants. The whole idea is that you're directing water into these systems. It ponds temporarily, flows through the soil and then drains out. Part of the project and through the workshops that we did which were wonderfully facilitated, one of the areas we talked about at Rain Garden but there were several different concepts and um, we hadn't even fully developed what that concept might be and what a rain garden was. This is where it all begins, water when it rains has nowhere to go, runs down straight through the veggie garden and then continues down onto our yep. grass area. Maybe a swale through here to take the standing water here by the time you're getting down to this part of the school, this bottom oval, you're getting flooding, you're getting erosion. You know from experience where most of the water is, but like what we do is we actually start to then draw that around catchments and say, okay, where is actually most of the water coming from? And I'll get the levels around here. Yeah, that'll be great. Round up to there, yep. and then we've got something to talk about. That, that's right, so if we could get that yeah. before the design workshop, then we can, we can start yeah, looking I at can that. Do that'll that. be great. We'll add up everyone's score for what they get, and then we'll add up these scores, and then we'll kind of have a discussion around what's the best site. You've got three points. Three, three to the frog pond. Three to the frog Ooh. pond, yeah, okay. Oh. I'm gonna go one to cola, one to frog, one to kidney. I've got one uh, cola, two frog. I think the cola, all three, because it is the key to the school and uh, community. We, no, I've got an opportunity, <laughs> we had to actually choose an area and it was quite a process to find out well where, where do we want the project to be. Rong Pong Pong comes up quite well because it actually doesn't have as many of the competing uses. It's a medium complexity project, whereas the cola it's actually a much more complex project. And you'd also be able to direct a bit of our grant money into fixing up the frog pond. I really want to know which one you choose. <laughs> Even you're coming to It'll be on one. Oh, oh, yeah. It is a community grant, and I think that really needs to be part of the, the decision making process. A frog pond is more standalone, it's not so integrated with issues yeah, that we might mistakenly issues. try to address. Yeah. We have the opportunity to have our Indigenous community members involved in that process too, because they're looking back to an historic waterway. Yeah. And I think that's another element that mm. is something mm. that we can be measuring our decisions against. Yeah. I think it's an important one for our school. Two things we should do with the frog pond. <laughs> okay, great, so we've selected a site. We discussed the number of ideas and the, the pros and cons. A lot of the issues that we're trying to deal with was around just trying to address drainage issues. So there's a lot of areas where when it rains, it's ponding on the paths um, and it's very difficult to move around the school. Beautiful little frog pond. Well worth uh, incorporating in part of the project, I think. So here we are outside the frog pond now. Got a little bit of water coming down here. When we had the storm, we could really see where the water wanted to go and that try as you might, if you're trying to control it with maybe more engineering and plumbing means, it, it doesn't always work. Yeah. So it's just going straight down the path mm. and into the frog pond. There's that metal strip in the 
Yep. In the lawn area. Yep. Yeah, until we saw that video, none of us actually really realised that water was flowing through there. It's completely functional, but it's really illegible. You really don't understand exactly what's happening with the water. The main benefit in terms of creating that creek line is you make it really clear that all the water runs off that ash felt down through the swale and into the pond and there's a story there. So where is it going to be? <coughs> we've, we've solved that question now. How do you get water in and how do you get water out? Where's the water coming from that ends up all the way over near the Goanna and then all the way down that path? Yes, yeah, so walk over the route of where the water goes. So you'd be a water particle. Yeah. In terms of design, if we break up into two groups, we could actually have somebody kind of working on the pond area, somebody working on this area, and then somebody working on, you know, that bit around the back. So we could actually have break into three or four groups coming up with a little plan for different areas. Then when, once we've got this, this bigger plan, yeah, we put them together, and then we work out how much can we actually bite off. I'm just going to jot down here what those groups need to be working on. One should work on the frog pond, and then I've caught it just for the moment the water monitor trails, and then there's a central area near the goanna. So you're going to do the frog pond, Nat's that, yeah. group, and your group is the, the goanna. So this is kindy green. We're just going to excavate and put in a small ditch with a bit of ag pipe or something. Is that right, Chris? We're going to excavate the level of the turf there to bring it down 200 millimetres and then just re-turf on top. One of the ideas with the swale was to take the stones and keep these as the sort of low point through the swale so we're using it and keeping that feature. I think we just opened a can of worms and we talked about vehicles coming through here so... Yeah. <laughs> We take it off the stormwater line and feed that in as well, so they're both being fed in, so all the water will be this side of the path. Straight in to a little pond under a bridge, joins a bigger pond, which is sitting where the existing one is now. A bit of swampy marshland perhaps with some nice grasses that they've got down on the Cooks River. It's grown beautifully down there and then it'll enhance the frogs and lizards and all that sort of stuff. I think it'll be enough now seeing it. Thank you. Water will come feed into this top pond first, retain some water, slow the process down under a bridge and then into this which we'll clear and redo as well. In a school, education is a prime part of the design and a prime outcome that we want to achieve. So the whole idea of fixing the drainage problem has been to keep everything above ground and highlight the way that the water moves through the school. I mean the great thing about this project is that it's also teaching the kids about playing part of a catchment so that when they go down to the Cooks River and they, they might cycle along the Cooks River and go and play at the playground, there's a connection there between the fact that what they do on their school, if they drop litter then it's going to end up in the Cooks River. So there's the whole idea of being connected to the catchment. What we did was instead of going straight into stormwater, we have a path of water along the swale here and then it flows underneath through here and this was a big part of the project. I want to say enjoy the frog pond. We're custodians of this planet. I know that when you spend time in your rain garden and the frog pond that you'll be thinking about all of those things. It's important for all of the students to recognise that we are all Cooks River people and have a responsibility to ensure that what enters the Cooks River is the best we can make it. Education is a whole part of the actual design so that every time it rains you see that and you get educated and you learn about the movement of the water through the system. So that whole idea of connection to biodiversity on the school but also biodiversity for the Cooks River and the, and the water systems. From the earliest years in school we want to be teaching children about sustainability, how to live with nature, how to embrace nature, how to be aware of the history of a place and we feel like with this project it is a learning tool and I think it's really valuable and you know children start learning the day they're born so why do we wait to teach them about sustainability? We want it to be all around them and for them to feel like it's a natural part of their life and their environment.